This is not Russia. This is not Ukraine. It is not even Europe. You may not even meet a Russian on the street, but you will see shops selling Russian chocolate, fur hats, vodka, and wooden matryoshka dolls. And the people who live here are consumers of ice cream, vodka, and kwas. Have you guessed? This is the provincial capital and the largest city of Heilongjiang province of the People's Republic of China. We are in Harbin, which is more than 1,000 kilometers northeast from Beijing and almost 6,000 kilometers east from Moscow. But this city is not like other fake Chinese projects such as their Eiffel Tower replica in Tianjungcheng. And it's not like Suzhou, a city with an accurate copy of London's Tower Bridge. A lot of these old Russian-style houses are the real deal. They were originally built by Russians and have simply been renovated or rebuilt as they once truly were. Harbin is a curiosity indeed, a Chinese city with character, an authentic melting pot of cultures. As for at least 10 years, the city hosted the largest population of Russians outside of Russia. So how did it happen? Why were the Russians here? Why did they leave? What's all this about? Let's roll. The region of Harbin remained largely rural until the 1800s with some 10 villages and about 30,000 people in the city's present day urban districts. This is despite the fact that people have been living here since at least 2200 BC, so well over 4000 years. The region may be more developed today if the Jin dynasty hit had not been completely destroyed by the Mongol conquest which began in 1211. But as you know, Genghis had to come and literally and figuratively F everything up for everyone, especially China. As a result, the history of northern China was put on pause and forgotten for some 500 years. Development here truly began in 1898 when it was founded as an administrative center for the Chinese Eastern Railway. The Russian Empire constructed this railway between 1897 and 1902 after being granted jurisdiction from Imperial China. The system linked Chita with Vladivostok and Port Arthur in Russia's Far East. Harbin was originally a poor fishing village based around the banks of the Songhua River. But as the Russians arrived, soon there were shopping streets and churches along its river banks. The first generation of Harbin Russians was mostly made up of the builders and employees of the Chinese Eastern Railway who built everything from scratch. Houses were constructed, furniture and personal items were brought from Russia. The settlement quickly turned into a boom town, growing into a city within five years of initial settlement. The majority of initial settlers came from southern Ukraine, but there were many Russians, Jews, Poles, Georgians and Tatars also. The city was intended as a showcase for Russian imperialism in Asia. The buildings, boulevards and parks were planned well before the October Revolution by distinguished Russian architects, giving the city a very European appearance. During the Russo-Japanese War between 1904 and 5, Russia used Harbin as its base for military operations in Manchuria. Seeing Russia as a rival, Japan offered to recognize Russian dominance in Manchuria in exchange for recognition of Korea as within the Japanese sphere of influence. Russia refused and demanded the establishment of a neutral buffer zone between Russia and Japan in Korea on the 39th parallel. The Imperial Japanese government perceived this as obstructing their plans for expansion into mainland Asia and chose to go to war. To get a better picture of this conflict, you may watch my video on Vladivostok after this video where I go through some of the other decisive battles which occurred during this conflict. But with regards to Harbin, it was the Battle of Mokden which was the closest and most relevant. It may have been the largest battle in human history up to that point and the last most decisive major land battle of the Russo-Japanese War. It was fought from 20th February to 10th March 1905 around the crucial location of the modern city of Shenyang, involving 610,000 participants with 164,000 combatant casualties. And the scale of the battle, particularly with regards to the amount of ordnance being expended, was unprecedented in world history. The Japanese side alone recorded to have fired 27,394 artillery shells in just over 10 days of fighting, matching the ammunition consumption of the German army in the entire 191-day Franco-Prussian War. It was a closely fought battle, but the Russians lost most of their combat supplies as well as most of their artillery. 
and heavy machine guns, so they chose to withdraw. Tsar Nicholas II was particularly shocked the tiny Asian island nation of Japan, approximately 2% of Russia's landmass, could defeat the powerful and huge Russian Empire. It was indeed one of the first shocks of the 20th century. Despite the war setbacks and the Japanese taking control of most of southern Manchuria, Harbin continued to grow. Churches were built for Russian Orthodox, Lutheran and Polish Catholic Christians. And by 1917, Harbin's population exceeded 100,000, with over 40,000 of them being ethnic Russians. It is estimated that only 11.5% of all residents were born in Harbin. And following the October Revolution and the Civil War that followed, Harbin was ready to accept many more. More than 100,000 defeated Russian white guards and refugees retreated to Harbin, which became a major center of white Russian emigres and the largest Russian enclave outside the Soviet Union. And for good reason, the city had a good Russian school system, as well as publishers of Russian language newspapers and journals. Basically, escaping to Harbin was like escaping to another part of Russia. So the Russian Harbin community ended up numbering around 120,000 at its peak in the early 1920s, due to the influx of people escaping the civil war. The Russian community in Harbin made it their mission to preserve the pre-revolutionary culture of Russia through its numerous Russian language newspapers, journals, libraries, theatres and opera. And so Harbin was called the Paris of the Far East and was China's undisputed capital of fashion. These were probably peak years for Russians living in the city, as the Republic of China discontinued its diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union in 1920, leaving many Russians stateless. Meaning Russian citizens were forced to take on Soviet citizenship in order to be permitted to work, as stateless citizens could not. This meant that those same citizens were now easy targets for the new Soviet government to repatriate and punish, a significant factor once Stalin came to power, as effectively all citizens who had escaped Russia during the times of the civil war could be labelled as traitors or sympathizers of the now deceased Russian monarchy. Essentially most of the population of Harbin were targets. But before the worst of that could happen, something stirred over the sea. The 1929 depression hit Japan hard. The civilian government found that it had no solution to the problems presented by the worldwide depression. The unemployed of Japan looked to the strength of the army to assist their plight, rather than to what the politicians were doing. The voices of senior army generals were heard and they argued for a campaign to win new colonies abroad, so that the industries there could be exploited for Japan. The most obvious target was a full-scale invasion of Manchuria. So on September 18, 1931, a lieutenant of the Japanese Infantry Regiment detonated a small quantity of dynamite close to a railway line owned by Japan's South Manchuria Railway near Mukden, Shenyang. The explosion was weak, it failed to destroy the track, and a train passed over it just minutes later. But the Imperial Japanese Army accused Chinese dissidents of the act and responded with a full-scale invasion. After the Japanese capture Kigihar, they moved towards Harbin, closing in from the west and south. Harbin's defenders fought a 17-hour token battle, possibly in an effort to involve the Soviet Union in the conflict, as the Chinese artillery was posted in front of the offices of the Soviet-dominated Chinese Eastern Railroad. But it was of no effect as the Soviet Union did not involve itself. The Japanese invasion of Manchuria and establishment of the puppet state of Manchukuo in 1932 marked the beginning of the end for the Aryans, Moscow, as Harbin had once been known. Harbin was now the largest city in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo. This new regime was problematic. In 1935, the Soviet Union sold the Chinese Eastern Railway to the Japanese and many Russian emigres started leaving. 48,000 of them were arrested during the Soviet Great Purge between 1936 and 1938 as Japanese spies. This was a part of Joseph Stalin's campaign to solidify his power over the party and the state. Most departing Russians returned to the Soviet Union, but a substantial number moved to South Shanghai or emigrated to the United States and Australia. By the end of the 1930s, the Russian population of Harbin had dropped to around 30,000. 
The fighting in China raged on well past the start of World War II, leading to some of the worst war crimes committed in the last century. In a complex that was simply called Unit 731, only a few kilometers outside Harbin, a museum has been built so no one can forget the cruelties that took place there. The somber black building brings to mind the Holocaust Museum in Berlin. During the war, the Japanese quickly realized that they would not win a war against the Western superpowers with conventional weapons. So they started intensive research into biological warfare towards the end of the 1930s. And it was in Unit 731, which was the largest research facility in Manchukuo, that experiments were carried out with all manner of things, from salmonella to dysentery and anthrax to tuberculosis. They used rats, hamsters and horses to host bacteria colonies, which they then tested on prisoners of war and the local population. Amongst other things, the Japanese contaminated wells in Mongolia with cholera and typhoid and then followed closely to see the effects this would have on the local nomads. Research was carried out with more than 50 different bacteria and viruses, and literally tons of bacteria colonies were produced. The doctors routinely carried out vivisections, as in the practice of performing operations on live subjects, in order to study the progression of infection in victims. To make the experiments as realistic as possible, prisoners of war were sometimes bound to stakes out in the fields and bacteria bombs were then released nearby. The prisoners were dressed in metal suits to protect them from the blast so they would not be killed instantaneously. Experiments were also carried out to study the effect of extreme cold on the human body and to test grenades, positioned at various distances and angles. Between 3,000 and 12,000 citizens, including men, women and children, died during the human experimentation not including victims from other medical experimentation sites. Almost 70% of the victims who died were Chinese, including both civilian and military, but close to 30% were Russians. The Russian fascist party had the task of capturing unreliable Russians living in Harbin to hand over to Unit 731 to serve as the unwilling subjects of the gruesome experiments. Luckily, the weapons developed here were never utilized in combat. The Soviet army took the city on the 20th of August 1945. On 28th of April 1946, the communist government of Harbin was established, making the 700,000 citizen city the first large city governed by communist China. During the short occupation of Harbin by Soviet army, thousands of Russian emigres who had been identified as members of the Russian fascist party and fled communism after the Russian October Revolution were forcibly deported to the Soviet Union. This more or less ended Russian life in Harbin, as by 1964 the Russian population had been reduced to 450, and by 1988 the original Russian community numbered just 30, all of whom were elderly. Modern Russians living in Harbin mostly moved there in the 1990s and 2000s and have no relation to the first wave of emigration. Today's city of Harbin is the largest in the Heilongjiang province with a population of over 10 million people, making it a little less populated than Moscow. The modern city is mostly famous for the annual Harbin International Ice and Snow Sculpture Festival which began in 1985. It's amongst the four biggest such festivals in the world. About 15,000 workers are hired for the creation of exhibits in early December to be done by January. These ice artisans cut 120,000 cubic meters of ice blocks taken from the Sanghua River's frozen surface to create massive ice buildings and large-scale snow sculptures that are then illuminated as though they were real cities. Now, if you are interested in learning more about Russia's far eastern capital, click you know where. And this is my Patreon map. Long-term sponsors who donate via Patreon or any cryptocurrency will be added to this map. Thank you all for your generous support. Also, this is geoperspective.org. Check it out if you're in the market for some swanky posters or a map to put on your wall. All purchases 100% contribute towards encouraging me to create this content. Now have a guess where this footage was taken and I'll see you in the next one. Geoperspective out.